What do you mean it didn't drop? Shut up. <laughs> for those for the pre-recording, uh, we were talking about Hitler's testicles, as you do. Oh, actually, he's got both, but one of them didn't descend. Does that mean oh. he'd have been really good? Like you know, in like the Edwardian period, they used, <laughs> like the choir boy thing. You you know what I'm talking about. Where they used to like no, because he still had to, he still had both of them. So he still yeah, but had... one didn't drop. So would his voice still be like the angelical? Oh. Hello and welcome to the Two Arms Podcast. Uh, I'm George, and I'm joined by my co-host George with the big boy beard, and me with the titchy, oh. still growing beard. Oh, sorry, still growing beard. Yeah, big arms. Pretty much. So today, uh, a po- quite a popular requested topic was could America have won the Vietnam War, followed by a quick advertisement and followed by a second discussion on whether fictional armies could or would have worked if they existed today. Um, cough, cough, war wars. Yeah, cough, cough, war of stars. Um, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I've so, almost had a spill. Almost had a spillage. Almost had a terrible accident. Uh, anyway, just to clarify before we start, um, we mean no disrespect to any veterans or any anyone who may have fought in this conflict, because we know there's a lot of you still kicking around. Uh, thank you for your service. We're not trying to insult you when we or anything you've done. We are just saying the facts as we saw them later years. Uh, we should also state that neither of us are actually experts in American politics. No. Like not true. George said, it's all true. It, it's our research. It's the closest we can get. Pretty much, yeah. So, yeah. Please bear with us on that front. Uh, so, my stance on the Vietnam War is uh, America couldn't... Well, I, I say just America. It wasn't just America. There was South Korea and Australia and New Zealand. and I think New Zealand were involved as well. In a, if a small amount. In the Vietnam War. Uh, my belief is they couldn't have won, and George's, your opinion is? I, I, I believe there was a possibility they could have won. I don't quite know how, in the sense of, I can't give you a, here's an exact way they would have won, okay. but I can give you possibilities of what would have led to possible victories. Okay. Uh, if that makes sense. Fair enough. Uh, my my first point of why they couldn't win was it was the first televised war, if that makes sense. Um, it was it's the first time you have images of men being mutilated, shot, burned, stabbed. There's no censorship, unlike there is now. Oh, shit. Um. Reported for the first recorded time live for audiences, uh, we're coming under fire and danger. There's a CBS article where they're on a jungle trail and the reporter actually comes under fire from a Viet Cong ambush. Um, also, I think the lack of censorship on the media at that point also caused great problems with uh, America's view of the war. Uh, this is from my source for this is a CBS report, and I'll read it word for word. Uh, reporter Mosley Schaefer recalled the shocking wit- recalled the shock of witnessing Marines burning down 150 houses on the outskirts of a village of Can- Camney. An officer told the newspaperman that had been ordered to level the area. Three women were wounded in the attack. One baby was killed, and four people were taken prisoner. Safa asked a soldier if he had any regrets about leaving people homeless, and the soldier replied, "You can't expect us to do you your job and feel pity for these people." Another soldier told Shaffer, I think it's in a sad way, but I don't really think there's any other way you can get around it in this kind of war. Americans Americans back home were stunned when the CBS report about Camno Village hit the news. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my point is, is I don't doubt that horrible stuff happened. I don't think America would have been loved but it's more had America wanted to they could have basically flattened the entire country I don't think that would have worked I'm not saying it would have worked but I'm saying they could have done it uh, there's 
my whole point is there's lots of stuff they could have done. Like you said, it was the first televised war. Yeah, it was the first televised war. And that was basically always going to go poorly for them. Mm. Um, but there, there are ways that it could have been improved. It, it's had they gone through the route that you have in the Middle East of building schools and all that. I reckon it would have taken a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of faff. But I, I reckon there would have been a possibility. I I would argue that they had more of an advantage in that they have more of an advantage in the Middle East nowadays than the troops back in the sixties serving in Vietnam did. Which were Oh yeah, no, of course they do. But no, no, it, I mean it's like more... I mean like um they weren't seen well. I'm trying to phrase this in the right. They weren't seen completely bad, whereas the 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 forces going into Vietnam were seen as completely bad. Because obviously, for those who don't know, the Vietnam start, War started when North and South Vietnam uh, split into two. The North obviously being communist, the South being uh, staying with democracy. And there was there was actually talk of a ceasefire and a truce, and then America went no nope, no. Nope. Um, it's the domino domino effect. The yeah. yeah, we can't allow that. And then the whole conflict started off again after they'd kicked the French out. Yeah, um, and I think that from the word go, you would lost a lot of people's and attentions. Whereas the in the Middle East, yes, obviously in the West, there's quite a lot of controversial about the Gulf War and the Iraq War and Afghanistan and such. But you had before that, you had the first Gulf War, which was liberating. I know this is we're here with guns, but we're OK with that rather than in Vietnam, where it was you, we were having peace. And then you've just marched in with tanks and guns. That's not wrong. Yeah. Again, it, nothing you're going to say is wrong. But. Yeah. It, again, I just reckoned had they tried, had there been. Oh, are we still on Twitch? We should be. Oh, uh, and... There's a frame rate drop, but it's gone now. Okay. Um. Yeah, had what? Uh, shit. What am I getting at? Sorry, give me two seconds. Sorry, I'm a fourth. The thing with Twitch distracted me. No worries. Uh, right. Yeah, it's had there been enough support behind it. I reckon they could have turned it being a publicised war around. They didn't. And it, it's, like you said, it's, well, how... it's, um, it's... It's the first time it's happened, right? So you have got dumb shit. Like, you know, today a soldier wouldn't be allowed to stand there and go, yeah, we were ordered to burn down this entire town. Oh. It, it's That order hopefully wouldn't happen today but it's like you say it's a televised war it's a learning curve mm. they gotta get they had to get over that and it, it is definitely a big detractor and honestly even though i'm arguing that they could have fixed it i don't think they would have well, it's, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate if for you, this if you could if you could have fixed it how would you fix it though because i've during my research, I've seen a lot of arguments. Yes, they could have won it if X, Y, and Z had beat them. Uh, it, I personally it, can't see it, so I'm, I'm curious at what your. It. I reckon through the publicised war part. I reckon had there been enough driving force behind it from the military, it maybe could have been done. Because I do believe a lot of it is. The, I know it's not exactly the timeline, but just for argument's sake, they'd come out of fighting the Second World War, where, in 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 comparisons to this, the Second World War is still Napoleonic, in terms of 
bad army over there, good army over here. Mm. Um, yeah, where, as opposed to the Vietnam War, where, yes, you're fighting a uniformed enemy, but you're fighting a uniformed en- enemy that could be any person well, around you. I was gonna say, well, I, uh, again, quick service a moment. When we're discussing the Vietnamese army, I'm going to be using two different terms. Uh, George, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me on this one. If I say NVA, uh, that's the North Vietnamese Army, I'm talking about uniformed soldiers who have tanks, who would rely on ma- yep. basically battlefield tactics that you would expect. If I say Pavin, uh, I mean People's Army Vietnam North, is the guerrilla fighters who you'd fight in the jungles and on the roads in Vietnam. Yeah. I know there's more groups into it for those who know a lot more about vietnam uh however just to yeah. keep it simple i'm just using those two terms uh, yeah that's yeah. It, it, it's just the um, simplest way of putting it i reckon if they had wanted to go that route it, america probably could have done a lot by doing some secret squirrel shit to fuck with the uh according to uh, it, it, to be fair, it's an old book, and I am using Wikipedia to get the actual name of it. Uh, Edgar O'Balance, Tracks of the Bear, Soviet Imprints in the 70s. It's a book that came out in the 80s. Right. Claims that the Soviet Union basically had about 3,000 officers there supporting the North Vietnamese? From my research there was some evidence of that of NVKD units. Yeah. Well, I, it, yeah. I, I reckon had, like I said, had they wanted to go through the secret squirrel route and taken out their Soviet support hmm. Because, right, I understand technically they probably can't because, oh, we're not technically at war with them. The, the... I was going to say, if, if they did that, I think there would be catastrophous fallout for the world. But, um, like I said, you get into secret squirrel shit, because in theory, the Soviets probably shouldn't have been there anyway. No, but under that argument, neither should the Americans. Yeah, but... Mm, it, like I said, it would be secret squirrel shit, but it's a possibility, because, remember, you've got So, is it SOG? Dav SOG, I think. Yeah. It, it, you've got the American SOG running around who's basically the CIA and Delta Force's bastard child. <laughs> they, they, but Sorry, it was the way you put it. I just liked... <laughs> but, but they could have done it. And I'm sure they probably did do some dodgy shit like that. They did. Um, uh, I, I, this was actually something I was going to hook into about when they were fighting Pavin. Um, oh, here it is. Um, apparently the Soviet Union lost 16 people. So they did take some casualties. Yeah. Well, there has, again, I don't know how true this is. From research, it's very 50-50. The, a troop of uh, Russian Soviet soldiers at the time did attack an American airbase. Yeah. They disguised it as a North Vietnamese attack. Uh, again, I'm not sure how true that is. I'm not implicating, but there is. I believe there was evidence to support that the Russians had a yeah. bit more of a darker hand in it than we all are led to believe. Uh, yeah, I reckon, like I said, my whole point is that I reckon if America wanted to, they could have done that. Apparently there was 200 North Koreans there. Yes. Um, is that from the same? No, it's not. The Colourful History of North Korea-Vietnam Relation. Yeah. It, it, I, I reckon... I, I reckon that... The North Vietnamese were an effective force, but I reckon had they lost their 3,000 Soviet... Liaisons. Yeah, let's call them liaisons, because <laughs> I cannot fuck to list every title. Yeah. 
um, their three had they lost their three thousand Soviet liaisons, they could have been maybe not fucked, but it would have definitely been a hit. It's. I I think the other problem is though the America never managed to close the Ho Chi Minh Trail. True, but again, we spoke about this before. It's from some of my research. Part of the problem is America. I don't know if it was how they quantified their victory. I don't know if they were just trying to make it look good. But the amount of times where America would turn around and go, we won this battle, we killed 2,000 people, da 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 without taking into, into account that there were, there were actually like 6,000 enemy combatants there. Yeah. And 4,000 of them got away to fight another day. Right. Had they turned around and gone... We've had a fight. The outcome maybe wasn't a victory. It's because if you think about it, America basically or seems to have gone considered every single engagement they had a victory. It's because it's because they weren't fighting the same. They it, it was a, every yeah. battle they fought, and I will agree with this on any, any amount of things. Any battle they fought against the NVA in an open battle, they won. Yeah. The problem and is, it, you're not just fighting the NVA, you are fighting Pavin as well. Yeah. Which is a and completely different... Rebranded how they reported thing. We still on? Yeah, we're still on. Cool. I'm not sure about your internet, George. <laughs> yeah, had they rebranded it? Because... Where's fucking the date? Yeah, no, that's not the date I want. When the fuck did America get involved? Uh, 1962, I believe. It's 1962 yeah, or 1960... It... Yeah, was I right? 1962? Yeah, sorry, I was looking at the dates, and it's just the general start of it was 1955, and I just... Had to oh, that, that well, that's when the French... Yeah. yeah uh, right. Basically, my whole thing is, is essentially... You've got however many years of being told, yes, we won that engagement, don't worry, good. Oh, yeah, but we're still fighting them. It's it, it, it's like work. I, I had this conversation, I know it's slightly off topic, but it sort of works as a parallel. It's I went in and had a meeting where they went, congratulations, you're doing really well. Work harder. <laughs> yeah, I, it, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. It, it sort of, it could feel a bit like that. Had it been, okay, we're doing all right, we haven't fucked up, but we here are. Well, it's it's an interesting. You should say that. Um, I watched a short documentary made by an Australian news channel. I think it's definitely by some Australian thing uh, called The Quiet Mutiny. It's in nineteen seventy. Um, and it's very interesting. They they show one of their psychological warfare campaigns. They show one of their psychological. Yeah. Okay, and they're, they're talking to this colonel uh, of the air cavalry, and what they were doing uh, throughout the most of the Vietnam War, they were throwing leaflets out out of helicopters with words such as "just surrender, it's cool, don't worry, it's fine," and they were blaring. Uh, well, a bit a, qu a quick bit of cultural background. Uh, the Vietnamese believe that um, your soul, they believe in uh, worshipping your soul or something like that, I believe. Uh, again, I'm sorry, I didn't take notes on specifically what it was, but just so I can remember the rest. They believed in worshipping the soul, and they used to blare music from boats and uh, planes of a tortured soul of a soldier of a dad who died on a battlefield begging his sons not to fight anymore. And it was psychological warfare. And this yeah. small group of Marines they had, they blared it one month and they got one person. One person defected to them. They did it the next month, they got five people. And you think, great, you know, great. That This is against Pavin rather than, than the, um, the North Vietnamese army. And you think, great. In that month, they lost 65 soldiers. Not wounded, yeah. killed. 
Now, war's horrible, war's nasty. I don't like putting it in numbers comparing stuff. But if they, if they lost for five people, they lost 65. That's, that's way too much. That, that doesn't equal out, and that would not be good. Yeah, no, you're correct there. Uh, yeah. You can't... I did, to me, that... It goes back to the First World War thing. We took that hill. Great. It took 200 men, though. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, was it worth the people Was it lost? worth the people we lost? Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, you're not wrong. And I'm not going to sit here and try and view what, not view, try and argue that what you're saying is wrong. Because, mm. yeah, it, it, that was, it was a mess. It was, it, it, it was the Cold War in a nutshell. It was a proxy war. It was, Uh, it's, the fuck the numbers? My also my other problem when people are, seem to have this agreement that they could have won the Vietnam. There were far too many green on green and green on grey incidents. You mean blue? Uh, blue on blue and yeah, blue on green. Sorry. Uh, again, for those yeah. who don't know military code, uh, blue on blue is friendly fire. So your own troops shooting yourself. Blue on green in this context we're using because we couldn't find any information about it is. Uh, friendlies firing on civilians or non, non-combatants. Uh, yeah, there were so many reported cases. Uh, not some, not all accidents. Um, yeah, no, don't. It... Yeah, so that, well, this this is what I was going about uh, again from the same documentary. Um, they, they, a guy, a, a two soldiers openly talk about how they've sh- how well they they hint that a lieutenant got shot in the back by, by one of our friends. Hmm. We can't say his name, but he got shot in the back with one of their friends. And you can tell just by looking at it, this guy shot a lieutenant in the back because he told them to go over the hill. And they went, no, fuck that, we ain't doing that. Yeah. Um, it... they, they had, I, I think, they that generation had had enough of war, especially for the American public, had had enough of war. Because if you think about it, in... To be for shooting their officers, I don't think it was a they've had enough of war. I think the problem is because America had the draft. Yeah. What you're getting is that uh, it's the stereotypical movie thing. What you're getting in Vietnam is. Hello, I'm your new lieutenant. I'm straight out of uni. I've never even held a rifle before. The captain's told me we've got to go over that hill. And you've got the people who have been there for a year because I think it was during this time we, the British, did a bunch of psychological surveys on its soldiers and they realised that a tour of duty... Um, shouldn't last more than six months. Yeah. Because your soldiers start to go a bit mental. I think currently America still does tours of duty of a year. I think back then they even did them for about two or three years. Yeah, it's two. It's a two-year tour. Yeah. Um, no. Basically, what you've got is you've got soldiers at that point. Yeah, sorry, you... I, I think it was... Um, the way I, I the way I remember the tour years is um, no, it was three years. They were expected to do a three year tour of duty, but if they didn't refuse to serve, they spent two years in jail, which <laughs> I always thought was brilliant. Oh yeah, no, that's the draft though. That's yeah, that's the draft. Um, you're getting confused between your contract and tour of duty. It's yeah, sorry. Basically, their contract would have probably been for about. Probably three years service, four years once you've done all the training and stuff. Mm. Uh, their actual tours of duty for our, us, it's 
ever since about the 50s, the British haven't... You cannot be, say, in current times, you cannot be deployed to the Middle East for more than six months. Mm. And you have to come back for, I think, three months after you've done your six months tour. Yeah, that sounds good. America, America, as of well, ten years ago, still did year-long tours. And though your unit probably wouldn't go back for about six months, mm. people can swap units in America a, like, a lot easier than they can in the British military. Mm. So it's not impossible for a dude to do... It's probably why, and again, no offence to any American servicemen, but you get some American psychos who basically go... I've done a year's tour of duty. I've come home. I can't adjust, so I'm going to go back. Mm. And they swap unit and go back after like three weeks in back home. They don't have a chance to normalize. That's basically what we had. So what you've got in the Vietnam War is, like I said, you've got brand new lieutenant going, hello, I've been told this is what we've got to do. It's They've told me it's very dangerous, but come on, we can do it. Yeah, let's be all happy and excited i played football and i know how to i don't know lead a run battalion for... <laughs> yeah yeah i've, I've, led, I've led a sports team i can lead a battalion yeah and then you've got the dude to have been there for six months a year year and a half who are basically sitting there going no we will die this is bad because yeah. they came Ever, the Vietnam War is where the term fragging came from. Yes, I was which just about to say. You do if your officer basically leads and you throw a grenade because a grenade leaves a lot less evidence than a bullet. Well, it's easy to let a grenade slip on the floor and not notice, should we say? And... It's not. It's not even that. If a grenade goes off, it's oh my god, he steps on a mine. A bullet is eventually some surgeon's going to take out a five-five-six round and go. Hmm. This is suspicious. Vietnam don't use this. Uh, yeah, the term... is a friendly fire incident. Funnily enough, the first official... It's a side note, this isn't anything to do with the Vietnam War. The first uh, case of fragging was in the English Civil War, for Britain, where they'd won a battle and a group of sharpshooters just turned and shot the Lord that had led them to victory because they hated him that much. Just fun little, fun little side story. I was going to say, I don't think it was called fragging back then because... Um... No. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it wasn't called fragging back then because it comes from Vietnam with the term frag grenade, I believe. It the the first case oh, of frag the first the... recorded case of fragging came a lot later though in like nineteen in fact I've even got a date for it when the first recorded statistics were. In between nineteen sixty nine and nineteen seventy two there were recorded nine hundred total incidences of fragging. That's be- yeah. that's when records started to keep. Now, with the, that, you, I, I can't help but wonder how many were not recorded, how many were... How, how many were missed, how many How were, many were missed. Um, how many were successfully covered up as friendly like, uh, acts by like enemy. Enemy. They, also, if they wanted... To, I've read reports that if they wanted to warn an officer, sergeant, NCO, or whomever, that if they... They better stop in case they get fragged. They'd throw a tear gas or a smoke grenade at their feet instead as a warning. Yeah. As a oil it, pack it, it in. Yeah, like this is the thing. I reckon another thing that might have helped is possibly if America stopped conscripting people into the military. I can kind of agree with that. Because part of it is you've got everyone's seen that picture it's on the fucking wikipedia page of the uh, marine private who's on a beach and he basically he looks like he's 12 essentially he looks ridiculously young his uniform doesn't look like it fits him uh, as far as i'm aware he's got his belt over his shoulder because it doesn't fit around his waist it's too big for him yeah i think i know which picture you it's quite a famous picture. It, I would 
send it and see if you can get it on the screen, but I can't find it at the moment. But it is on there. I saw it. it it's stuff like that doesn't help. Mm. It's you're sending a bunch of people over to an inhospitable war zone where, admittedly, back to the Second World War, it wasn't great. But you're also not going to get bitten by a that means you're going to shit yourself to death. Yeah. The environment the environment they were fighting in was not ideal. In the slightest. It's also, also, I feel that the military, because of... I almost called it national service. Because of the draft. I feel that it lost some of its professionalism. I... Because... I, I, it's not exactly perfect, but it's that scene in um, Forrest Gump, right? Right. Where you've got all of the dudes. I understand they're not on the front lines at that point, but it's you've got soldiers cutting off oh, the Lord. arms from their uniforms. They're all. Carrying a mix. Hang on. Oh, it's the ice cream man. Oh, he's early today. Okay, he's okay. He's a street away, so carry on. Yeah. Um. It. You've got. You've basically got a mess of individual. It's fucking hell. Jimi Hendrix was drafted into the military, and as much as I like him. <laughs> he did not take right. it seriously. I've read about his yeah, antics. He didn't take it because I like him. You do not want Jimi Hendrix fighting your war, right? Mm. You, but think about how many people like Jimi Hendrix slipped through the slipped through the cracks, got sent to Vietnam, and were basically stood there going, "I I am not cut out for this." I, I can't be fucked for this. Yeah. Yeah. It's because whilst I'm not saying that every this is I'm aware that every case of fragging isn't like I was saying isn't the new officer based people who don't want to fight who go ah oh, well rather than you might be on my side but that doesn't matter to me yeah that's that's pretty that's pretty much what uh, the fragging was I think as well. With regards to you were saying, right, the thing, the thing we, just before we carry on, yep, I should sorry. say, fragging isn't always killing the officer. No, the, fragging is normally you wound the officer to a point where they get sent home. But, like we were saying, sometimes you did get soldiers who went, the "Officer's a fucking idiot," and intentionally going out of their way to kill them. Yes. Whereas part of the reason you use something like, again, fragging, you use a frag grenade, is you throw it near the officer. So when it explodes, they get a bit of shrapnel in them, so they get taken away, not killed. Yeah. Again, you are then playing with grenades, so... Yeah. It... But... Mm. Well, going back quickly to one of your points you had, um, with the draft, um, I think the other thing... We're, we're that kind of put the anti-war sentiment in everyone's mind at home and on the front lines where you had World War One, World War Two, the Korean War and the Vietnam War all within the space of 42 years. Yeah, again, not wrong. Now, it's... that's about three generations worth of, of, of a family. Yeah. That's granddad, even, dad. If, if you're going off of generations, even before that, it's you got... The Civil War, you've got the Revolutionary War. In essence, every generation of American had a war. Yeah, to fight. kind of. But I mean, so I can like... understand war fatigue. It's it's. I actually learned about this in uni because of the Vietnam War and war fatigue. American unis don't do war studies. Oh right, did not know that. It's why they do military history, and it's like a specialist thing. Okay. They, they they did war studies at some point, and I can't remember when, or they tried it in like the 60s and 70s. 
and they weren't getting enough people on the courses had to drop it and it was all because basically when they eventually went you said you'd be interested in doing this course but why haven't you done this course and people were just going there's there's just so much there's shit so there's so much, much going wall. we don't want to focus on this and to be fair it's a fair point hmm. but it's war fatigue is a thing and I completely understand that well, it's not even that. It's the fact that okay, I know this is this is like an eighties view on the first world war, but it's the war to end all wars. First world war, okay. Second war. This is the war to end all wars, okay. This is the war yeah. to to keep keep the West safe. All right, okay, fine. This is the war to end communism, but we just yeah. The fuck no, <laughs> no. You know, it, I do wonder how many dads after the Second World War, when their sons were, were being called up to Korea and the Vietnam War, were just like, really? Yeah. Re you know, really? I'm, I'm, and and grand, grand, you know, the granddads and grandparents going, we've lived through three, four conflicts in our lifetime now, all within this space of time. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I think the other problem, and the other reason that I don't think America will win the war, is discipline. Uh, obviously, there's, we've just we've briefly mentioned talks about fragging. Yeah. Um, I think this is sort of my point. It's because of drafting. Mm. You've got so many people from all walks of life, probably not suited to be soldiers. They're just trying to get as many people in. You're right. Yeah, sorry, I was just checking checking the Twitch room. Um, yeah, you get all these people coming in, coming in from all walks of life. But there's one, I think, key element that kind of, to me, caps it. Uh, which is again, I, I I feel like I need to put a quick word. Out. Kids don't use drugs. We're not advertising drugs. Don't use them. You have the introduction of uh, marijuana and things into, you know. You're a young kid from who's 19. You've gone over, you know, you're from a good Christian household. And me and you, George, we've seen this from our war studies. Uh, I myself have seen it. Uh, you go over, you know, you go over to a foreign land and um, someone offers you a funny cigarette, should we say. Trying, We're trying desperately not to get banned from Twitch. Um, someone offers you a funny cigarette. You smoke it. You feel fantastic. But uh, you're not as combat effective as you could be. Also... Um, hang on, hang, can, I, can, I, can uh, I just say one little piece quickly? Oh, yeah, yeah. Before anyone jumps on the comments going, smoking uh, the devil's lettuce, should we say... Fuck! I was going to call it <laughs> I was gonna say, Before someone smoke, saying smoking the devil's doesn't affect combat effectiveness because there was a Medal of Honor recipient who was high on a joint when he held a position with his machine gun. From... My understanding, it affects different people in different ways. And if you yep. don't believe me, watch some of the footage of them using a shotgun as like a, as, as a, as like a bong. <laughs> Just to see what I mean. Well, also, to take it a step further, um, you've also got... Am I allowed to say names of substances on Twitch? You can, or... uh, as long as you advocate afterwards that you don't agree with using them. That was that. Right, I definitely don't I definitely don't agree with using this. You've got heroin. Yes, don't like use it. Easily it. It's it's literally the amount of cases I came across where Vietnam not Vietnamese, sorry, American soldiers went, We've burnt down a heroin production plant, but we've got all the heroin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of cases of that. There is and then you also fall amount. into going back to the ill-disciplined people because, slightly because of the draft. Um, you've then got people going, oh, I've got PTSD. Oh, apparently heroin and weed, both substances that I should not be using in a combat zone. Or using at um, all. Well, yeah. Yep, I mean, more, more specifically in a combat zone where it's going to 
fuck everything up, not just for you, but others. Mm. Um, and you've got people sitting there going, oh, well, this is apparently meant to help me relax. So I'm going to try and relax a bit. Oh, and now someone's attacking our unit and I'm not combat effective. Yeah. And then you also lead to this is the big problem with all drugs that you then get people stuck on an addiction. Yes. And you do get cases of American soldiers brutalizing locals. Yes. Just to try and get their hit, essentially. Yeah. Going going well overboard in the terms of their going well into excessive force essentially because they're desperate to get what they've basically hooked themselves yeah it's to me I can understand from the situation they were in I mean uh, again I'm not advertising drug use I can understand why yeah, no, they, at the no. time why drug use was so high because if you think about it imagine you you're a young american soldier you're away from home you're 19 you're away from home i know the average age is 21 but for our argument's sake you're a long way from home no one gives a shit you're there let's be brutally honest no one gives a shit that you're in a shitty situation you, you're in a, you're in a foxhole it's pissing it down you can't drink because yeah yeah beer beer's banned that's the army beer's banned you can get beer but not where you are or you've got drugs yeah which one are you gonna what are you gonna do yeah no I'm... yeah I'm, I'm just saying like on to other negative effects is I also feel that whatever you want to call the movement the anti-Vietnam state yes is it fucks everything because essentially what you have is you get soldiers who are conscripted to fight right yeah. coming home and if they don't end up like oh, what's the film wherever the film is if they don't end up as anti-vietnam protesters hmm. they get spat on for walking down the street yeah, if they... Again, I came across a few cases of it's just someone getting spat on because they thought they were a soldier. And this this specific case was... It was a former soldier, never actually served in Vietnam. Can't remember why, but there was some whole faff of why he never served in Vietnam. But he'd been a soldier and then went on to be a police officer. Hmm. And basically, anti-Vietnam protesters came up to him and spat on him, and I think it was like they spray-painted something on his uniform or poured pig's blood on it, or, you know. Yeah. The, the random shit protesters do when they get a bit aggressive. Mm. not saying it's not necessarily unjustified, but to this guy it was, and he was literally like, it, it's... I was in the army and I'm getting treated like shit. I, I've never even seen a Vietnamese person and I'm being treated like shit. Mm. Which doesn't help. It, Like I said, it's... They seem to have the... The protesters specifically had the them and us. It's... Well, if you're not against the war, then you have to be for the war. Mm. If you're not standing here with your sign saying we should leave Vietnam, then you're you're clear you're clearly standing down the street with a sign saying we should send more people to Vietnam. It seemed to be that you couldn't be in the middle of the road for it. You couldn't just be a it's happening. Yeah, I I on with life. I mean, it didn't help that in the 70s, the National Guard shot anti-war protesters at Kent, Kent University State and killed four of them. Oh, yeah. That doesn't help. Uh, but again, how many of those National Guard 
were ill suited to be holding a weapon. No comment with with recent events and stuff going on in the world at the moment. No comment. We're trying to keep away from that. No yeah. comment. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, okay, to move on from that, I also feel that possibly um, had Vietnam continued under... Shit, I had looked this up and I've forgotten who it was. Was it Gerald Ford? I think it was John. Right, yeah. It was had the president had the Vietnam War because Gerald Ford came after Nixon after Nixon got ousted the war day. Yeah, had it continued maybe under Gerald Ford, I don't know enough about Gerald Ford. I've got to be honest, I didn't actually remember he was a president. Um. Yeah. Had it continued under him, it might have had a different look. It could have been the general of the U- Nixon being ousted and the war continued. They might have gone, oh, look, it's under a new president now. There will be new policies. Yeah. And I'm not saying it would have necessarily got support, but... I, I, I was going to say, I don't think that would have mattered with everything that was going on with all the other points I, I'm not sure if it would have mattered or not but had an effect mm. it could have been it could have been oh Nixon's gone maybe this new person will actually run the war better true True. Like people, people might have been willing to give it a second chance or give it a bit more breathing space hmm Maybe Gerald Ford's um, policies might have been a bit less extreme, a bit less fucking uh, fire and death and a bit more hearts and minds. Yeah, that that means changing the entire doctrine, though. Well, yeah, but Mm, doctrine does get changed in these... You get two choices in these situations. You either double down on your doctrine or you change it. Mm-hmm. And the problem is up until this point, it seems to have been doubled down by the American administration, maybe under a new one. They might have gone, right, let's step back and actually change this. Let's maybe not pull out of Vietnam completely. Mm. But let's, because I understand under Nixon, there was the, uh, fuck, um, Viet, Viet, Vietnamization, Hmm. I've no idea if I pronounced that correctly, which was essentially a policy under Nixon's administration to expand, equip, and train the South Vietnamese forces and to assist them in an ever-increasing combat role. So basically, have the South Vietnamese forces start taking the forefront. But under Nixon, it seemed to be a lot of, yes, yes, the South Vietnamese, they're doing this, they're doing this. Yes, Mm. don't take pictures of the 200 Marines standing behind the 12 South Vietnamese sort of thing, whereas under Ford it possibly could have been the opposite of that Hmm. it it could have under Ford there was the possibility that it would have been 200 South Vietnamese assisted by 12 Americans it's it's possible it's possible Yeah, it's there would have been more room but more importantly there would have been the chance that the general public would have given him the opportunity because basically Nixon fucked himself. Hmm. Nixon made himself a tyrant and a criminal. So no one... He could have come up with the best solution to win the war 
with no casualties and no one would have wanted to hear it. Pretty much. So maybe under somebody else there might have been a possibility. No, yeah, that's a yeah, I'll I'll I can kind of understand that one. Uh, yeah. Right, I think we're ready for an advert and then we'll move on to the second piece. Okie dokie. Okay. So this episode of Two Hours Podcast is sponsored to Beat to Battlefields. Uh, me and George have been tour guides with this company for many, many years. Uh, we take scout groups, police cadets, and other youth organisations over to the First World War, uh, over to Belgium and France. We can also do Poland, we can also do Germany, we can go pretty much anywhere. Uh, we do unique tours and we offer insight information you would not get with other uh, guides. We specialise in doing it especially for youth so the kids won't, won't get tired or bored. And we keep it all fresh. There is stuff for kids to do as well as the leaders. Please check them out on Facebook and have a look. As George said, we're tour guides for them. We we have gone out of our way to a com not company accommodate anything tour groups want. It's you want to go fucking hell that picture. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, no, you you set up an itinerary online with us and you decide that the weather maybe doesn't fit for it. We can accommodate it. We, because I have gone on a few tours where it's been, we've planned for a day of outside, um, outside battlefields, you know, tre trudging around fields and it's pissed down for four days and they've gone... No, 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 we can't change it. We can't change it. we got to take you down this field that's basically... <laughs> a quagmire. Yeah. Flanders mud, yeah. We, we go out of our way to avoid doing stuff like that because mm, most of the crew members of Beats the Battlefield have Thank done you. the shitty tours. Yes. We don't want to make you do them as well. So that's the end of our quick word from our sponsor. Right, so the second half of the contract is analysing fictional armies. Uh, yeah, the picture is that because it was going to be something else. The problem was that this image is copyright free. And I know that uh, certain other companies are, are not happy with their image being used. So this was kind of the best I could get. I won't say names. Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop and Star Wars. But... Um, yeah. Oh god. Where where do we want to start? I don't think the Clone Wars would work in a realistic sense. The Clone Wars or the Clone Army or the clone the whole the the clone army. Why? Because for the simplest reason for realistically you, you have Camino which is producing yeah. clones, as we all know. Um, fighting battle droids. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on Earth, we have the, the space that separates us is the sea. Okay. Yes, people can get lost at sea. However, you know you've got a you know if you've got a working cell phone, you can be found at sea. It's relatively easy. Space is too vast and too large to have however mm -hmm. well whilst i can see where you're going with this and you are correct yeah you've got to take into account mm -hmm. the star wars universe has sound and fire in space yes but at the same point how you cannot track well, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yes, okay. That means there is oxygen in space, which there isn't, and and fire in space. Yes. Anyway, moving on. No, this is my point. Space is too large. You can't have. Oh, this is an entirely republic sector because you would not have the amount of funds available to track all across that distance of space. Yeah, I that's believe. Like, that's like me getting in a rubber dingley in the English Channel and going, no one may pass here without me spotting it. You're not wrong, but that's not how space in Star Wars work. And 
uh, everyone's aware space in Star Wars doesn't work really. If you want that sort of shit, go watch Star Trek. Not that I'm against Star Trek. I do like Star Trek. It's more... There are two very different takes on sci-fi. That's my first point. Is with the with the with the, the the galaxy of Star Wars. My other point is, if all the clo- if all the clones are based off one particular person, that means they're all going to have the same de- defects as each other. If that makes sense. Yes and no. In the law, all of the defects. What, what defects are you thinking of? Okay, argument's sake. Uh, we don't know this. Django Fett is colorblind in one eye, so he can't see red in the left eye. That would then mean that all the clones would be colorblind in their left eye, hypothetically. No, it doesn't. That's not. Because in the law, that sort of thing is removed from their genetic code. Wasn't it meant to be a hypothetical perfect person? Yes and no. It's, it's George. They age twice as fast as a regular person. I know, but I, I, I just. Oh, don't... sorry, sorry. I didn't see that was in the chat. I thought. Yeah, that's in the chat. <laughs> um, again, yes and no. They wanted the perfect soldier. In the old expanded universe, Jango Fett basically proved it because he managed to take out a dark Jedi in a fight and he had because he was one the old style of Mandalorian um, he sort of had this weird sense of honour and it was essentially it was essentially Jango Fett wasn't the sort of person to commit the atrocities seen in Vietnam against the civilians but he had no issue with committing those atrocities against the bad guys. Mm, that's a good point. Um, so that's why Django Fett was chosen. And then he basically went to Camino. They took his DNA. And the long neck aliens. Messed with him to make him perfect. Or as perfect as he could be. Because part of it. The old law for it. Is they made the Ark Troopers. Yeah, but they were... Who were 100%, like just Django Fett. And they then went, oh, they don't work well in team. (laughs) So they then took... They went back and (laughs) messed with his DNA a bit more. (laughs) Mummy, it's my time with the blaster. Oh, no, it wasn't even that. It was literally... You've got a baby Django just pulling on, like, the neck. Mummy, my time with the blaster. I want to play with the minigun. In the expanded universe, there is literally a book where a two-year-old kid who has been exposed to the equivalent of live-fire training exercises gets told he's going to be decommissioned because he can't be controlled. And he steals a blaster off of Django Fett and threatens to shoot his way out. Is that Boba Fett, per chance? No, this is before Boba Fett was born. This is, like, still the prototype Jeez. art troopers. Jeez. But it's literally, this, this kid goes, yeah, you're not killing me. You're two years old. You can't even hold the gun, mate. <laughs> but he's still trying. And they basically, like, yeah, we should probably make them... We should probably make them a bit more obedient and a bit less... <laughs> A bit less likely to shoot people <laughs> they don't like, just because they don't like them. Do they play catch with them with thermal detonators? You ready? You ready? Go, go, kitty! I wouldn't be surprised, because again, in the law, arc troopers are nut jobs. They're sort of portrayed as they're nutters, but there are nutters. Yeah. Um, my problem with like the Star Wars thing is the ranks. Is is you fall into the thing of clone marshal command, okay. which is apparently above a clone command. The problem with that is, though, I've got there is no solid evidence how many commanders is under a marshal commander. I know the rank structure in it is really screwed up. 
Yeah, and it's it's, it's, it's it's weird. To be fair, I don't expect it to be perfect. It's it's Star Wars. This is the thing. I I got over the fact that space doesn't make sense. If I can deal with the rank structure being a bit iffy. But what I find quite funny is you then have hundreds of people on the internet, like yourself, like dedicated. Well, that's me. It's more you've got people who. I overanalyze it and eventually go, right, that's just, that's been a creative decision. You've got to deal with it. Mm. you then got people trying to justify why in the Clone Wars, Captain Rex is in charge of the 501st. Yes, I have seen that argument. The, the thing you fall into is the 501st is a legion, which should have a martial commander, which would be Cody's rank. Hmm. Um, you basically fall into when George Lucas or whoever was making a clone you they went this will be a cool name we're going to we're going to have the 212th battalion we're going to have the 501st legion uh we're going to have the 327th star corps who are the yellow guys who kill blue lady um and shit like that and then you sort of sit there and go, okay, cool. How have all these people got a commander in charge? Like, when they all roll up to a fight together, mm. is it, do they sit there and go, um, excuse me, I'm in charge of a legion. I may I may be a captain, but I'm in charge of a legion's mm. worth of people. I don't give a shit if you're a martial commander, mate. You're in charge of a battalion. Up yours. <laughs> so... <laughs> I would just be as you've been talking. I've been looking at the character on the the right side. <laughs> I love I love uh, laugh groups sometimes. Have you noticed he's wearing the same train as I do? Yeah. No jeans with it as well. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, I, I like I like the top off. That's really cool. Glasses, okay, fair enough. It's laugh. And then I just realised he's wearing jeans <laughs> and trainers yeah. compared to the other guy in like a Highlander's kilt. Sorry, I, I just noticed that and I thought that was quite amusing. I, I've got to be honest, I've been trying to not look at the picture because it is very distracting. <laughs> it's a good picture. I'm glad I picked that up. But, yeah. yeah it, it's, mm. Admittedly, Star Wars doesn't make sense. Then you get into something like 40k. Which, fuck it out. I I do I don't even find forty k, and I played it for about ten years. <laughs> yeah, forty k. No, like, I had to I had to stop being even remotely involved in forty k, because when sales in Space Marines started dropping, they went, oh, we've bring them back the son of the God Emperor. Horror. And he's nah, um, Robert, Gilliman. Robert Gilliman, who's one of Horace's brothers. But he, he, <laughs> he was the old whoa, whoa, It's probably whoa, whoa, whoa. pronounced differently. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, okay, hang on. The immortal emperor of 40k has a son called Robert Gilliam. Hang on, hang on. Look. I'm going to put it in the chat, and you fucking tell me how it's okay, meant. Okay, okay. No, I just love it how it's like, Horus, the Emperor, Robert Gideon. Hello. <laughs> yeah, holy, yeah, no. R tell Robert, me how the fuck I'm meant to pronounce that. R Robert uh, Gilliman. It, it, it's... I just, I, I just love, if, if that is actually how we pronounce his name, I know I'm going to get hate from I, I, I did, I did spend... It was quite funny, because I didn't play Ultramarines, because fuck off, I do not like the blue fucking Smurfs. I was going to say. Um, the, there were points where I'm sitting there with someone who was really devoted. Robbie Rob. And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, called, I called him Robert Gilliman, and someone basically stand there and said, no, it's actually spe it's actually pronounced Rob out. I said, yeah, no, I'm not doing <laughs> That's worse. That's worse, yeah. though. 
Yeah. Like, the, em Done. the Empress Saint got his throne. I want you to meet my sons, Horus. Hail, hail, Emperor. And my my other retarded, like his son, Robert Gilliam. Well, to be fair, to be fair to the I Emperor, pocket he, didn't calculator. Sorry, he, he didn't name them. He didn't name them. He basically sent his... No, oh, shit, he did. To be fair... What well, he did name him, that's evil, worse. Evil, evil warp gods came along, stole his kids and threw them out into space, and they got adopted by random dudes on planets. <laughs> Sorry, so I just know, find that really it. amusing. <laughs> but... Yeah. But, yeah. I'm Robert Gilliam. I'm uh, the son of the Immortal Emperor, so um, you better do as I say. Is up until recently. You basically just had armies of a thousand super soldiers running around doing their own thing. Like I get that they've all got certain loyalties, but the whole idea is oh, so we can't have another war where one dude is in command of half of the space marines we're gonna we're gonna split them up into chapters of a thousand dudes and they're all gonna be autonomous and it's just the like you how the fuck does that chain of command work it doesn't well this is the whole problem because it'd literally be like imagine your army was just platoon no company formations, no battalion formations. It's literally just, you've got an army of even just a thousand people, and it's only organised into platoons, like of 30 dudes. This is why I'm an Imperial Guardsman. Just saying. Yeah, but fuck off, do the Imperial Guards make sense? They don't, but like, I, I prefer kind of their, everything is really cheap, so you just chuck it at... It, it, it's like the dam effect. You you push, you get as much liquid against a wall as possible and it breaks. That's my kind of... I mean, yeah, but, you know, it's completely not based off of the idea of the Russians. Plus, I actually have some war. of the headgear. Yeah, I have I have some of the headgear of Krieg. One second. I feel like if we're talking about 40k, I need to put my Krieg back on. I can't be fucked there to go, go. And get the... I have, to get my I have got headphones on so you can't hear it, but I am now a member of Krieg. Quick, whilst George is gone, let's all talk bad about the chat. Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> I'm going to watch the recording back, and if you've said something you mean, I'm going to put... Yes. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, it's 40Ks. Weird. To be fair, Star Trek is actually probably the most realist, if idealised, version of... Maybe not an army, but a semi-military force. Fuck off, I don't have a smooth brain. Sorry, carry on. No, I told them all to say horrible things about you in chat. Oh. Um, but what you sort of get is you get this weird thing in Star Trek where apparently Star Trek, not Star Trek, Starfleet are not military force. Have a ground troop unit? And it's never actually explained because it's basically just random. It's mentioned every, like, once every season as a throwaway line. Mm. And it's, you do eventually have to sit there and go, hang on, hang on. How the fuck can Captain Picard sit there and go, we're not a military force, da da da, da. And then, like, three seasons later, start talking about Starfleet's ground forces. Yeah. It it's a bit like the navy sort of going. Right, we're we're taking. Um, I was about to give an example and then realised. Oh yeah, it happened in the First World War. The navy divisions. Yeah. Actually, I have a question for you and chat while we while we've still got a small audience. Okay. If if like we needed to get if we had an army in space, would it be? controlled by the Air Force or the Navy? Which branch would it fall under? 
Um, I believe, George, you'll find it's controlled by Space Force. Yeah, I was waiting for that response, but I'm saying if Space Force didn't exist, like take them out of the picture, which branch would it come under? Yes, yes, yes. Um, technically, it would be Air Force. Um, because that's maybe. what stuff like mm, right. The problem with it is, is all of the stuff actually came around more, more fly ships than boat ships, <laughs> yeah. But bit of Britta, Buzz Aldrin, and uh, Neil Armstrong. We're both Navy pilots, not Air Force. But yeah, it, it's to be fair, the whole reason the Navy part of NASA is just because of... No. <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term, political dick-waving. They, they managed to get in there first because they got in there before the Air Force existed. Because you'd need stuff like NORAD and shit to have a space force. Sea is like I mean, space, but underwater. Wait. I mean, to be fair, have you ever looked at, like, the designs for um, 1990s possible spaceships? You know, when everyone was under the impression of... Flying cars. Yeah. yeah like yeah. early spaceships. Yeah. And to be fair, it's actually got some basis. You could just refit a submarine with a big-ass rocket. And it, uh, to be fair, you can't just strap a big firework to a submarine and it becomes a spaceship. Oh, that, that, that just becomes a fucking tomb. That becomes a tomb that goes really high in the sky. But, in theory, there is a possibility you could turn a submarine into a spaceship. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, it sort of makes a bit of sense why the Navy would do it. Because the Navy are more used to being in confined spaces and all that bollocks. Plus, they'd call it a fleet if it was in space. Yeah, also... Actually, if you think about it now, in real life, space fighting isn't X-Wings and shit. No, it space wouldn't be. Space fighting would be huge-ass capital ships trying to line up against each other. Yeah. So basically go back to, to... First and Second World War naval war. Yeah, which means I was right. But it depends. Smoke shit eating grin. It depends though. Because what you end up getting to get to that point, you need to rely on the Air Force. And then once you've got to that point. I think that'll be like an airborne naval, like an aircraft carrier. Possibly, but. You then fall into the thing of if it's a space force. Right. Mm. You then take people from the Navy, Air Force and Marines and the Army get left out. And if the Space Force TV show is anything to go off. Yeah, but then you then you, you the just do... get shot on. Yeah, well then you do what they did on D Day where you get landers with military personnel inside. Yeah, but the point is, if you're going off of the Navy, you don't get the Army. You get the Marines, because the Marines are a department of the Navy. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, I Here's the thing. If you made a Space Marine Corps, mm. right, would they have medics or corpsmen? Because the only reason the US Marines have corpsmen is because their medics come from the Navy. See, I'm talking about the big brain shit here. Yeah, I was going to say, damn, that's actually a good point. 
could you the thing is in space as well yeah with we obviously technology is advanced at the moment if i don't know we're on a battle sh we're on some ship and we require surgery could they actually perform it could there be hospital ships like there would be at yeah. The, like the, yeah but how would you perform a surgery with zero gravity because in theory you can make artificial gravity but that we haven't had that ability yet Right, we have had that ability. It's just too much of a fucking effort. I just don't. I just couldn't. Okay, right. okay we're gonna cut him open now, and all the blood just starts flying like, like, like a lasso going over. It's like, oh shit. Okay. Oh, and there goes the intestines. Right. And there's the kidneys. Because what you can do. It's like the worst the game of operation ever. Sorry. <laughs> is to make artificial gravity. You've just got to make the ship spin. But you've just got to you got to figure out the right speed you have to make it spin. I was going to say, that doesn't seem like a good idea to perform surgery on, but... Yeah, you're not spinning inside the ship, you tit. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's not like the ship's spinning and you're in a fucking tumble dry. The ship spins <laughs> and you stick to the floor. Doctor, we need to cut... <laughs> for you knobhead. Doctor, we need to cut this man's liver out. Sorry, I'm going to. I feel like I'm on the roller coaster. It wasn't was One second. Blah! Just flies off. You fucking. <laughs> the best way it can be summed up is have you seen The Martian? No, I haven't. Well, fuck you, George. <laughs> They've basically got a ship where this whole central part of it is. Um. Basically zero gravity, but then they've got like a habitat ring that slowly spins, mm -hmm. and that spinning causes artificial gravity. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, the again the whole problem with it is you basically got to calculate how fast it spins. Um, and then what you get is basically if it's spinning, like if it's got its own mechanism to spin, and then you end up spinning the ship. For whatever reason, either gravity massively goes up in that section of the ship and everything gets crushed, or it magically goes down and everything floats away. So basically, it isn't a good idea to perform surgery in a spaceship in any situation. Then, oh, uh, you can perform surgery in a spaceship, just don't have to get out of the way of anything. Yeah, but I, okay, okay. I, I know we've gone off the beaten track of analysing fictional armies, but this, this, this. Oh, I wouldn't know this bit. Yeah, I was going to say that's the point of this. This this is the important stuff. Okay. Say you needed to heart surgery. Like a, a bypass, a heart bypass or whatever. So you, you slice open the flesh. The blood starts pooling like water does in space and just starts... Okay, so that's everywhere at the moment. Okay, fine. So we need to cut open the rib cage. So... Zzz. Okay, bend the rib cage out to infect the heart. Okay, the, now the rib is floating off like three metres there, and it's clogged in the air, and now we're all dead because it's clogged the uh, oxygen filter. You probably have a dude with a little vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because it's what they do, isn't it? It's what they do in actual surgery. If they're doing like... Oh, yeah, like they have a little surgery. suction. They have a suction. They've got a dude with a little suction thing to suck the pools of blood. So it would probably be the same with a non- then again, I've got images of it being like surgeon simulator. <laughs> yeah. Where, oh no, his heart's attached to the fucking Hoover. Uh, <laughs> and I'm killing shit. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, yeah, no. I've just got a picture of what's her face from Family Guy, the cleaner. Consuela. I, 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 <laughs> I, I need more in the and more lemon pledge. No, you can't put lemon pledge on the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's always something I, w I wondered about in like uh, it's, it's science, um, it's like sci-fi games. It's like oh, uh, like uh, what, Dead Space when all the, the, the obviously the, the monsters are like eating people and all the blood. It's like zero gravity. They just the blood would just clot everything up, and it would just cause that, and all the bones and flesh would just clog and stuff. I mean. Okay, let me yeah. put it like this. If a bolt comes loose and flies off and comes back around, it will puncture 
a massive hole in steel in like a rush in like a space station or something. That's the theory. No, but that that's the theory that if you throw a bolt in space outside of space, it will go around or go around quicker and then punch a hole in something. That was a theory I've heard. Now would it pick up more force? But the idea is the gravity is being pulled in, so by gravity it, pick, it picks up speed. But there's no gravity if it's if it's no. Being... But okay, if we're orbiting around a planet that has gravity like Earth, yeah, then it would. The theory is that the gravity would pull it in around the Earth faster in orbit until it's maxed into something like a space station or a spaceship. It's why they monitor um, all yeah. the debris in space. Yeah, yeah, that bit I get, but then that's just avoiding it. It's If it's inside... It's a bit like... Have you ever been in a car when you were a kid? I've never been in a car. Says the knobhead that drops. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but my point is, have you ever been in a car and like you've thrown something in the air when you were a little kid and you're like, oh my God, it's moved. Why hasn't it been left behind? Why hasn't it gone backwards inside the car? I've never done that in my life. I'll well, go. you're an idiot. No, I just don't want it to roll under, like, I don't know, the brake pedal or something. I'm not talking about fucking play dodgeball in the car. I'm talking about <laughs> gently throw something in the air. No, no, I, I've, I've never, I, I've never done that as a kid. Well, you're fucking boring. Yes. Anyway, I think it's time to wrap up stream anyway because we're whittling on now. So thank you very much for coming.